Okay, we are live at Pace Studio with a very special guest. We've got Alsara and the Nubatones. They're here to play a few songs for us this afternoon. And will you tell us about the first one? Sure. Um, hi, everybody. Welcome. Um, we are going to start off with Salam Nubia, which is the first song on our new album, Manara, that just came out a few months ago on Wonder Wheel Recordings. Um, so this is like a welcome and greeting song. So we're going to start with something nice and easy. شفت الحبايب قاموا قالوا قاموا قالوا قالوا السلام أسياد الحضارة أسياد الطيبة أسياد الإيمان يا يما شفت الحبايب
It was great. Thank um, you. So looking into the lyrics uh, in translation, of course, uh, the English lyrics for your next song, it kind of looks like there are a lot of ideas that deal with searching for a homeland. Um, and to me, I mean, I get a sense of diaspora, uh, cultural diaspora coming mm. from that. And I'd love to hear in your own words what your next song is about, what it means to you, what you're thinking about when you wrote it. Um, the next song uh, is called Ya Watan, which was actually the first single off of Manara, um, our album. And Ya Watan, a oh, homeland. Um, I mean, for me, the question of what is home has always been at the crux of the majority of my life. I'm a child of the diaspora. I grew up an immigrant most of my life. Left Sudan, then moved to Yemen, then left Yemen, came here, moved around a lot even here. So for me... Where are you from is usually within one of the first three questions I ever get asked. And it's one of the hardest to answer usually. Um, so now my whole thing has been like, I'm from everywhere. <laughs> you can't escape me. <laughs> um, but homeland and what does it mean to have a home, especially in our current state of events, especially when a lot of the ideas of country and the ideas of nation states have been continuously failing our humanity so often and so much. Um, why is it when you do the natural thing, which is go in search of life, go in search of something better, it turns into this huge thing that is complicated far beyond what it is, which is a very basic thing, which is that you need to live. And why is it that I must prove my exceptionalism in order to get to live? Um, who has the right to live and who doesn't, you know? And who has the right to a home and who doesn't? So those are questions that have always plagued me and I think have always moved with me because um, I get questioned at every border, so it's, it's always interesting. Um, even coming in here, I'm a U.S. citizen, just for the record, but I still get questioned at the border here, even before Trump, just so you guys know. Because okay, I know everyone got really shocked about the travel ban, but I didn't because I was like, oh, that happens all the time. All the time. Still shudder to think what would happen in the in the enhanced state of events. Just oh, yeah, no. I mean, the enhanced state of events is like, is like it's an official declaration. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just... But, but you, it's been happening for so long and it's been building up for so long that I feel like it's, uh, it didn't just start. And it's not just this one thing, just the travel ban. It's really important at this point of time to for all of us to think really intersectionally. You know, the travel ban didn't happen isolated. It happened with a doubling up effort on, you know, of police regime against um, protesters in Standing Rock, with uh, national park services being sold around, with the environment being more threatened than ever. Our human and physical rights as women, all of human rights in general are being threatened right now. This is a time for everyone to really wake up and notice what's been going on, not what just, what's been going on. So it's not new and it won't take a minute to just topple. So I um, it's, guess it's better to see than to never see. Well, thank you. We, I mean, we appreciate your you know, bringing these, these, this conversation to light. Here yeah, on, no, I mean, it's- at, at the studio. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm glad we could all talk about it. And then yeah. later we'll geek out about all the records. Awesome. <laughs> cool. Well, whenever you guys are ready, love to hear so, the next song. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, Oh, 
تطبن من سنين تطمق وتفلك في جبينك بالألم وين يا وطن وين يا زمن تطبن من سنين تطمق وتفلك في جبينك بالألم الشجر قلب جدب حبي لك زي العشرة والشجر قلب جدب ماشين سوا نفتش مطرة وين يا وطن وين يا زمن غضبا من سنين تتمطى وتفلك في جبينك بالألم وين يا وطن وين يا زمن طبان من سنين تتمطى وتفلك في جبينك بالألم That was great. Um, so your next song is actually the title of your most recently released album. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Manara. And uh, it's it says it's translated to The Lighthouse. Mm-hmm. And I would love to know why you decided to go with that and what that title means to you and um, how it connects to the song? Why we decided to call it that? Um, well, you know, life for me is like like a sea. Um, as cliche as that sounds, but it is. It's like the sea, you know, and it's, it's this big journey and you're traveling and you're moving and sometimes it's up and sometimes it's down and sometimes it's really terrifying. Um, And for some of us, our story starts and ends in one place. But for most of us, it doesn't, actually. The majority of people in the world, our story starts somewhere and it ends somewhere else. Um, and in that, in that mo- in that, from that A to B, you know, there is so much that happens. There are so many circles that get turned. Um, for me, I know that my story started on the banks of the Nile and... It ended in Brooklyn. It hasn't ended yet. Who knows where it'll end. Um, but for me, the the lighthouse in my journey has always been the Nile. You know, it's always been this thing that I know will witness me, for lack of a better word. Because there's one thing I know we all have in common as humans, and it's that we just want to be remembered. And I really feel like that's what so much of what this is about. You know, we... We make babies, we have families, we make art, we build cities, we make war because we want to be remembered. We want to make sure that we are the last one standing as the right one. Um, But that's not really true. We're all the right ones in our own personal stories. Um, And for me, I also noticed that the right to be remembered is more like a privilege than it is a right. It's a privilege that is won by those who win in the moment. So history is forever written by someone who won. You don't really know everything that happened. And for me, I've always taken solace in the idea that at least the Nile will remember me. At least I can come and go and tell it my story, pour my secrets on its banks, tell it everything that I need to tell it, and it will remember me, even if the rest of history erases me. Um, So it's always been sort of like the lighthouse in the journey. If the storm gets too much, keep your eye on the lighthouse and you'll get there eventually. So it's the Manara. Awesome, whenever you're ready.
بنر سفید لایونک اون صبح سر رحلت نا ادایر بنایونک یه دنیا سر بک جذب حضن حبای بک غد So you have one last song for us today, and it's called Nar, translates to fire. And reading the lyrics, to me at least, it looks like, uh, it reads like a story of somebody born into um, the, I guess, less privileged part of the economic spectrum. Mm. And uh, someone who is sort of manipulated by his circumstances. Um, hopefully I'm interpreting that right. <laughs> well... We I mean, I think the magic of songs is that they mean what they mean to you. Once, mm -hmm. once the person writes them, they are free to be who they want to be with you. How would you, uh, just, how would you interpret the song? Um, to me, this song, I mean, I think of the song as sort of like an anthemic song. Um, to me, this is a take to the streets type of song. Um, and it's sad to me that we still need that today in our world, but we really, really need that today in our world. And anthemic songs are sort of what I grew up on. Um, my parents are activists, and so I grew up marching and being an activist and fluent in that world. And 
I left it to become a musician. And so, but that's, that's a part of, I, this is how I see the world. And like you said, I was born into a part of the world that's been colonized over and over again. And so I understand very personally what it means to be at the, to be at the mercy of a lot of these politics coming to head in ter- and coming to head as money and coming to head as, as monetary powers. Um, and I feel like in a, today's world, big business is the supremacist regime that's taken over and we need to be really careful and watch out for it because a lot of the big institutions that we think have been set up to protect us are not there to protect us. Um, so the song is called Fire.
great. Thank you. Well, um, I guess to wrap up, can you tell us where we get to see you live coming up soon? Yeah, um, we're going to be in D.C. tomorrow night at the Atlas uh, Performing Arts Center on H Street, Northeast D.C. And uh, we're going to be in Europe starting March 16 in France and kind of moving around. So look out for tour dates coming up on that. Um, but yeah, come tomorrow to D.C. if you guys are around. <laughs> um, so, but before I also go, I really want to take a moment and introduce this beautiful band of people with me, uh, my musical family. On bass and trumpet is Mawena Kujovi. Yeah. <laughs> like, look, look, look. <laughs> On percussion and vocals is Rami Al Asir. Um, and on Oud with us is Brandon Terzik. That's right. Thank you. Yay. And with me on vocals, additional percussions is Nahid. Yay. Yay for all of us. <laughs> um, so thank you guys for having us here today. Um, we are Al-Sara and the Nubatones. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Al-Sara and the Nubatones, Al-Sara 5000. And yeah, check out our new album, Manara. Awesome. Thanks so much for coming again. Yeah. Come back anytime. Thank you. Thank you.